welcome to the Kingdom Mentor Podcast. I am so glad you could join me for this really special uh, guest. You know, I'm very passionate about the kingdom. That's why I call it the Kingdom Mentor Podcast and not the Christian Mentor Podcast. So with me is a very special guest, Matt. Tommy is a best-selling artist. He's an entrepreneur and mentor who is passionate about helping people like you live in the abundance of God's kingdom. Through his personal growth journey and extensive work mentoring artists, Matt learned how to make kingdom principles easy to understand so you can apply them to your everyday life and truly live an abundant life in Christ. So will you please help me welcome Matt, Tommy. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Hey, Matt, you know, I, I'm going to go real in detail, but I think the questions I'll ask you will solve your personal journey instead of giving you a backstory. Okay. <laughs> I think, good. I think if I, if you answer these, we're going to get the backstory. Yeah, so sure. your latest book is God's plan for living a simple roadmap to your ideal kingdom life. I read on an iPad and I think I've highlighted the whole first five chapters. <laughs> oh, good. yes, that's it. Okay. So I was really excited about that. So let's, first of all, I'm going to ask you about this. Tell us about the great disconnect that you see in the body of Christ, where you are seeing people live defeated. They're saved, but then they love Jesus, but they're yeah. living in a defeated life. Yeah. 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 I called it in the book, you know, saved, but not satisfied, frustrated, frustrated, not fulfilled, you know, and it's, uh, I started seeing this in my own life for a lot of years. And then once I started learning how the kingdom of God works and connecting with our design and our assignment and all of that, I, I started sharing that with other people and through mentoring artists primarily since 2009. And um, I, I was thinking, you know, gosh, I'm going to be helping artists to do all this practical stuff, like start an art business and marketing and all the things that I've been doing for years. And so much of the work was like all of this, you know, identity work around, you know, who are you in Christ and getting right. over the traumatic things and wounds of the past and all that. And the more that I would share my journey, the more people were understanding that and starting to get freedom. And then, so I started writing this book partly um, as an, or mostly as an effort to get this word out to the wider body of Christ. Cause my work since 2009 has primarily been with artists but all my artists are like my husband or my wife, who's not an artist, listens to you and they love it. Or my whole oh, wow. family is listening to you and you really got to get this out to everybody. And um, so right before I did it, um, we did a survey of about a thousand people um, and just asked them, you know, their comfort level and confidence with a simple thing. I thought simple things like knowing God's plan for their life, being able to hear his voice, know that they're on the right track. You know, are you feeling fulfilled and that sort of thing? And man, the vast majority of people that came back, and, and again, these are people that are in church, loving Jesus, on the worship team, you know, right. doing all the stuff, right? And so many of them were like, I'm depressed, I'm frustrated, mm -hmm. I feel like a disappointment, I'm not able to, to do things that I, I, I you know, I don't, I'm not confident that I know what God's plan is for me. And, and when I don't, that one glass of wine after dinner turns into three, I start yeah. overeating, I start pursuing sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and all the, all the stuff that the world promises to bring fulfillment. Right. And so I just started thinking, oh my gosh, this is like, if this is really true, and I know it is because <laughs> I'm talking to real people, I just thought, gosh, this has got to be the biggest issue facing the church right now, because it's what's keeping us focused on things that are not the kingdom and living lives that are completely unfulfilled and, uh, and unjoyful. Yeah. You know, you mentioned about, and I really resonated with this right about right in the beginning, is a lot of people think you have to work, sweat. You know, I was a, I used to be a golfer, and when I was young, I had a sign to be the best. You have to work harder than the rest. And then yeah. I went over into my very <laughs> religious mindset, and then I really started walking with Jesus. But there was still that struggle, and yeah, so, make it and happen, right? <laughs> make it happen. In fact, it so knocked me off. I started writing, uh, listening to the vine dresser, and the final words of the father was, say no to striving and yes to abiding. So right. why do you think, is it is our culture, even in the church, that we feel like we have to strive and, you know, do everything? Is that just from our culture, or is that just another mindset that needs to be ta tackled? Yeah, both. I mean, right, mindset gets developed not only through genetics, but also, also experience, right? So we model the things that that we, we see around us and we experience. And so I know growing up, I mean, both my mom and dad raised us in the church and loved Jesus the best way they knew how, but 
mom walked, worked three or four jobs. Dad was always hustling and doing it. And it, you kind of got this idea that the busier you are for God, the more spiritual you are, uh, the more effective you're going to be. And then when I graduated college and got into ministry, <laughs> believe me, that was certainly <laughs> the mentality of that. that the more you, you know, we got to get these things done for God and, and all this sort of thing. And man, it just tires you out and you end up focusing on all these things that seem so spiritual and seem so important. And yet a lot of times they have very little to do with the simplicity of just, you know, like Jesus said, I, I just do the things I see the father doing, right? Yeah. I'm just responding and listening to his voice and doing those things every day. And in that, that's how demons get pushed back. That's how the light of God comes Amen. into the world. That's how the kingdom gets established. And so I've just started, you know, believing that this thing is a whole lot more simple than we've made it out to be. And as I've done that, the fruit of that has shown up in my life as well. And that's, that's the heart of the book. So, right. And that's the journey that you've gone on and been able to help others. So I'm going to get real vulnerable with you sure. um, and my audience. I'm always am. Um, <laughs> I was really excited to uh, see you pop up for an interview because I immediately went to you version and was reading, I don't know if your latest book, but I was reading the last book, the devotional. And just the day before, I had asked God some questions. Um, I lost my husband to pancreatic cancer 10 months ago. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, and it was a terrible journey, Matt. October 3rd of 2021, he was in a fire accident, burn barrel, had third degree burns over 30% mm. of his body. Most of my listeners know this. And then we moved. We didn't move to a house. We moved to land, couldn't find a house. So then we're living in this tiny camper. And he kept getting worse and worse. And I'm thinking it's the burn. I mean, he couldn't yeah. sleep. Yeah. I'd hear him cry out all night long, Papa, help me. Well, about February, his kids visited him. And they're like, you need to go to the hospital. So we dragged him to the hospital. And then about February, we got the diagnosis that he had stage four pancreatic cancer. Wow. So from there, we eventually moved back to his sister's basement. I'm saying all this because I had... Uh, the Kingdom Mentor Academy, where I was teaching women how to find their voice from identity. I had yeah. my podcast. I had my dreams with voiceover acting. I just got started with that. And I had to drop everything. So full circle. The other day, God, as I say yes to God, he, he opens doors for me yeah. to go into voice acting, to uh, be able to, I'm in the Radiant Leadership Academy for speaking with Girl Power Alliance. Um, I, I picked up a marketing, all these things I enjoy, but I asked God, God, can you, this is my desires. This is what's in the sweet spot for me. I know I got to do the next thing to provide for myself. So I substitute teach. Then one day I said, God, I just want to stay home and answer the phone. Now I'm answering the phone for Nike. Those are just things so I can pursue the others. But that's why I'm like, okay, I don't want my living the rest of my life to be the uh, yeah. Nike. I even asked God, he, he, the Holy Spirit told me to go into the stock market and learn that. That took me two minutes, months to obey him. So I say all that to this. I was thinking, these are my heart's desire. I know desire in Latin is of the Father. So God, can I make a living doing this? Yeah. I believe you called me to be a wealth advocate. The next day I pick up your devotional. And it just, you just said exactly that. So I say all that to say, I would love for you to break down the ideal, the five principles that embody yeah. the idea. You know, you, what did you say? You said there's ideas and then ideals. Yeah. yeah. I would love to hear you break that down to the acronym ideal. Yeah. And I love acronyms. So, yeah, I do too. They're easy to remember. And I think as somebody that's been mentoring artists for a lot of years, you know, we, part of what we get paid for as mentors is making the process easier, right? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I've always tried to, to think of how to do that. Um, yeah, the whole ideal thing started with really this deep understanding that the first way that God revealed himself to humanity was as an artist. And as an artist myself, you realize that we always kind of start from the end in mind. There's a desire, there's a plan, there's a hope, there's a vision for that. And for me, I think for most of my Christian life, I didn't realize that. I just thought, well, I'm just kind of walking through the life best way I can, get saved, hang on till Jesus comes. And yeah. I didn't really fully realize like, man, when God came up with Matt and placed me in my mother's womb, <laughs> there was an ideal. There was an idea, a dream and a vision for me. Right. 
And it's the same for all of us, unique, but the same. And I think when I, when I started bringing these five precepts together, uh, they work for anybody at any time, in any place, in any, wherever you are in the world, uh, no matter your denominational affiliation or whatever. And ideal, I-D-E-A-L, is identity, which is who you are in Christ, you know, and who you perceive yourself to be, who you perceive God to be. Number two, design, which is how then God has uniquely wired you. What is the unique nature of God that you carry in your life to express uh, his light in life? Then thirdly, uh, so identity, design, expansion is third. And that's where your assignment comes in because as you're faithful with little, God makes you ruler over much. And so as you're faithful to pursue the things that God's placed inside of you, in your circle of influence, God starts to expand your circle of influence and, and expansion and alignment uh, or assignment come in there. Number four then is alignment, which is the part that's always this, this journey, right? We, we know who we are in Christ and we know who we are uniquely and this is my assignment and all that, but then it's, it's the 30 years, right, of, of, of alignment and refinement Amen. where God is not only trying to bring the right people, resources, opportunities, relationships into your life, but he's also yeah. refining you in a way that you can be able to receive the next thing that he has for you. Yeah. And then all of that, the fifth part of ideal is love, because mm -hmm. love really is the foundation of everything in the kingdom of God. But when we don't see ourselves through the lens of love, when we don't see others through the lens of love, when we don't see life and an opportunity through the lens of God's love, it turns into a, a lot of uh, wounded framework <laughs> that we start to operate out of. And so all of those things I find when people are walking in a healthy identity in Christ, knowing who they are, they know what God's called them to do. They're willing to learn how to listen to his voice, follow his lead, be faithful with the little things and do all of that in this radical belief that I'm already loved. I'm already accepted. I can see you as that. And I can trust God in the process, man, that is kingdom living. And that's what I call, you know, God's ideal. So but how important, then that brings us back to the ideal where it's in a personal relationship with Jesus and community is important. Could you touch on that for us, those two elements? Yeah, you know, I just, I love the the idea that, you know, Jehovah Jireh, for example, the, the nature of God, we see him as provider. But that word, Jehovah Jireh, actually means the God who sees and provides. Yeah. And, and you, you start thinking about, whoa. God not only knows who I am, he sees where I am. He sees what I need. He sees the journey that I'm on and he's placing, right? The right people and relationships and resources and opportunities in my journey at the right time, in the right place, as I am responding in faith uh, to him. And that is really, really important. And so I think every time that I've ever had any sort of big refining moment in my life or any kind of moment where you feel like it's an upgrade going to the next level. Rarely does that happen in a vacuum. It's always in the context of a person or people that God's bringing in your life at the right time, either with uh, a prophetic word for you or an encouragement or some sort of, you know, new opportunity or way of seeing things or, or pulling out the gold in you that you didn't realize was there. He's always using relationships. And so I think as much as uh, we all want to kind of lean into this, you know, do-it-yourself American spirit work ethic, that kind of thing, that's just not how the kingdom works a lot of times. It's really based in our submission to God, our embracing of who we are uniquely, and then our willingness to embrace the people and opportunities and things that he brings along the way to refine and shape and direct us. And the more we do that, the more quickly we do it, the more we get down the road, the more we resist it, it, we kind of become like the Israelites, right? Where a, a two week journey becomes a 40 year, 40 year struggle. So but what, what would you say to kind of bring that together? That we are the kingdom. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, in general, if you look at, you know, Ephesians, when it's talking about the purpose of fivefold ministry gifts, the purpose is to equip the saints for their work of ministry <laughs> like that. That's the whole thing. And so I just see any apostle, evangelist, prophet, teacher, pastor, whatever, your job is not to draw people to yourself, although that happens through relationship and that sort of thing. And I'm not talking about that. The jo your job and, and our job is people who are called to equip uh, believers. Our job is to 
look at you and say, man, how has God wired you? How can I help you recognize who God has created you to be and what he's called you to do? And if I do that, the church is going to grow. You're going to be juiced up with joy and fulfillment in your life. You're going to think I'm awesome because I'm helping you. I mean, like it's this beautiful symbiotic sort of sort of relationship. And I think that that's what a, a big part of this great disconnect is. You've got people who know they're called by God, who but who are doubting their unique design, who've never been equipped and sent to do the thing that God has called them to uniquely do. They've just been told, hey, come to church, get saved, hang on till Jesus comes, invite other people to Friday night this and Saturday, Sunday morning this and this retreat and that conference and just come to the altar and get one more touch. And it's like, listen, we need to walk with the touch that we've already got. We need to start, start walking in the power that Jesus has already given us. And, and I just think too, this is a, I don't know, I know this is radical today, but I'm like, Jesus's model for cultural transformation and uh, world transformation, if you will, was not political power, was not, you know, all the things that we're so comfortable with nowadays. It was sending 70 people out and saying, go preach the kingdom. And it's sending the 12 out and go do signs and wonders. And then, you know, it's not even until after the 12 go out and heal people and see the kingdom and all that sort of thing. It's, it's after that that they come back and say, now, Jesus, teach us how to pray. In, in other words, <laughs> in other words, Jesus is sending them out like, you know, we would say unready, unprepared, you know, all this kind of stuff. But I think God, can, can we say this? Jesus trusted the Holy Spirit in them more than they trusted the Holy Spirit in them. And it's like when we can learn, I think, as leaders to really release people and give them the things that they need to be successful um they will love us our church the churches will grow all all the stuff right but we got to start with with being about equipping them not building our own kingdom so uh, so many people are writing a wrong story of their life because they have a belief system that's jacked up yeah come on their identity is jacked up yeah uh, I know that in healing from trauma I'm really learning a lot about belief system. Um, I thought I was doing pretty good. And then I went into this new job uh, answering the phone. And all of a sudden this fear came up, Matt. And it's like, what is going on? But in the context of safe friends, I realized the fear came from my childhood where yep. I always wanted to please my teacher. Yep. So I get emails like they're my teacher. But you know, it's cool. Once you identify it, you're able to say, oh, uh -uh, no way. Right. And then boom, get your belief system back on track. <laughs> yeah. And when I worked with the ladies at the Kingdom Mentor Academy, we were real big on declarations all over the house. Sure. You have something like that, but it's easy to remember. So tell us the five R's for renewing your mind. Listen, if you're listening right now, please get a pen and paper. This is gold. Yeah. So the five R's, um, this is one of the, nobody ever told me how to renew my mind as a Christian, right? And yet this is the way that Paul says transformation happens in our life, you know, so, it's, so number one is recognize, you know, the Bible says, take every thought captive. So you got to realize with intentionality, when thoughts are coming into your brain and, you know, feelings are coming in and all this kind of stuff, you have to get used to grabbing that thing and looking at it and saying, Hey, does this align with God's word? Or is this aligned with my own woundedness, my own trauma, something somebody else told me from the past, whatever. You have to recognize, is this a truth or is this a lie? Is it God's word or is it not? Secondly, if it is not, if it's not God's best for your life, then you got to do number two, which is repent. Mm -hmm. That is metanoia, turn, change your thinking, change your mind, come out of agreement with that thing that is, is not God's truth mm -hmm. and into agreement with what is what his truth is, which is what the third one is about, which is replace. All right, so if you've been believing something for years, I can't do it. Money's hard to come by. You know, my life will always be this way. I'll always be sick. I'll always be poor. I'll never be able to fulfill my dreams, all this kind of stuff. When you realize that sounds nothing like my daddy, <laughs> that sounds wow. nothing like God's best. I turn from that. Lord, show me your truth. Yeah. You replace it then with his truth. You know, truths that say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I've already been given everything I need. For life and godliness you said god when i would ask in faith that in believing that i would have it you know so whatever it is you replace it number four 
you reinforce yeah. that every time the enemy comes in uh, with that same old lie, because usually he has a kind of a, I don't know, like a secret bag of, of, of lies and, and offenses and things like that, that he wants to throw at us and uh, that I'm vulnerable to in my life and you're vulnerable to in your life. Yeah. So when he keeps coming back with those, you reinforce the truth that God showed you. Amen. And then number five, you rejoice. And I just think, you know, as an ongoing part of your relationship with the Lord, you need to be not going to him every day. Oh God, you know how bad my life is. Things are so bad. If you would just do that. No, we go in rejoicing saying, God, thank you that this is my new normal in the kingdom. I've been given everything. I can do all things. You've given me faith and vision and whatever it is that God's showing you. And we talk about that a lot in the book, but rejoice in that and, and make that your vision of what God has called mm -hmm. you to. And as you do that, over time, we know through, you know, neuroplasticity and all the beautiful neuroscience research that's out there nowadays, we know that your brain begins to shift out of that old normal into this new normal uh, that aligns with yeah. the kingdom. I'm really big on the neuroplasticity. It's like yeah. the Bible's catching up to science. Um, <laughs> I love Dr. Caroline Leaf. I have another friend, Elena Vandermeter, that I hope to interview because I think I'm so passionate about people finding their voice, but they can't find their voice if they don't understand God's presence. If they don't understand these five R's, they may have troubles hearing his voice. Yeah, and for yeah. someone listening, thinking, oh, I don't know, you think God's voice is so booming. You know, try this, go down the road or just be listening. And you hear something. Does that sound like God? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't. And then even some ideas. You know, like I, I used to think, okay, I'm having my quiet time, no ideas, close the doors. And then Bill Johnson shared that, well, if you're having your time with the father and he puts an idea and you write it down then go back to reading the word. So I think some of my best ideas come when I'm just hanging out with the father. So to sum up, don't you think you said God always speaks to us from the place of promise and destiny yeah. by cultivating an awareness of God's presence, knowing his word. And recognizing his voice is foundational yeah. for every believer. You know, you know the Bible says, right? D delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires yeah, of your heart. Right. Those things that are from the father, you know? Yeah. And um, this, this, I think it's just so, so important for all of us to realize that God desires to give us things for us to not only that are going to fulfill us, mm -hmm. but also for us to accomplish. That's how the kingdom gets manifested in the earth. Mm -hmm. If he was going to do it all by himself, he would have done it all by himself, but he yeah. chooses to involve you and me uh, in the process. And I just, I just love that. And I just think there's hope for someone listening, Matt. They're like, okay, this is not the way I'm used to hearing it. And uh, would you, um, would you reach out with your voice live or recorded? Someone's listening and speak a prayer or word of knowledge. Just speak to them. I think they need a father's voice. Yeah. It tells them, hey, you haven't blown it. God's best is for you. Be yeah. thankful and watch yeah, what God right. will do. But I think let's let's just seal that with a, a prayer from your father heart. Yeah, Jesus, we just thank you that when you died on the cross, you not only redeemed us from death, hell, and the grave, you reconciled us to relationship with the Father, and you restored us to our place as your sons and daughters in your kingdom. And God, you have restored everything that we need for life and godliness. Yeah. We literally have need of nothing. And Father, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would so awaken people's hearts right now that are listening and watching that you would resonate inside of us with the purpose and the design that you placed inside of us before the very foundation of the earth. And that God, that there would faith would arise inside of us, even if it's, even if it's just a mustard seed of faith. If, even if that's all we can muster up because of all the junk that we've been through in our life and we're just coming to this moment right now, even if it seems by chance. Father, we thank you that there is nothing by chance, that you're here by divine appointment. And Father, we say yes to mm. the things that you've placed in our heart. We say yes, yes to the design that resonates with inside us. We say yes to who you say about, say we are. And God, I thank you that as we do, you're aligning and refining and bringing us into all the fullness that you have for us because that's your good pleasure. We thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's Amen. that yes again. Say <laughs> yes. 
Matt, how can people get in touch with you? By the way, guys, God's plan for living a simple roadmap to your ideal kingdom life. Do go out and get that. That you'll be that will be one book that could be a turnaround for you from the striving and trying to be the perfect Christian and all yeah. that. But how can people get in touch with you, Matt? Yeah. They can go to God's plan for living.com. You can get the book right there. Yes. Um, there's also uh, it's on Kindle. There's an audio book coming out later this this year. There's also a devotional that's coming out. Oh, great. Uh, it's going to be a 90 day devotional and a course oh, wow. coming out in the fall. So Excellent. just really be able to dive deep. But when you go to God's plan for living.com, everybody loves a good printable and there's a, a printable uh, PDF that is 30 days of biblical affirmations that they can oh. download right there and uh, it's free to anybody that wants to grab it so well i'm running there <laughs> well will you version have a devotional on new version i'm just curious because they have all your other books will that be in the works too i'm at, that's on my list i'm wanting to okay. do a seven day devotional for that yeah. and uh, i'm just trying to figure out how to but, throw all this goodness in seven until days <laughs> then yeah we got we can go to your website till then there's plenty there yeah Matt, thank you so much thank you for bringing light to so many Thank well, you for your welcome. heart that's so willing to stretch and really expose simple truths and change people's mind. I just pray God blesses you mightily and more doors will open because people need, the church needs this and your everyday person needs this. Yeah, absolutely. I know it's it's something that my heart's resonated. You just gave me a roadmap to follow to make that real. So God's plan for limit, living a simple roadmap to your ideal kingdom life with Matt Tommy. So thank you so much for listening to the Kingdom Mentor Podcast. We're very passionate to bringing conversational podcasts to you where you can find your voice, share your voice and market your voice from your identity. But how about this? From your ideal place that God has for you. <laughs> thank you so much. And we'll talk to you in the next episode.